Thanks to the supporters of channel member Rasel Sul. We all thought the worst thing about getting to the Champions League final and losing was getting to the Champions League final and losing, didn't we? We all forgot that would mean we'd have to play in the Club World Cup, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We're going to play in the Club World Cup. Plus, transfers, we're going to try and get rid of club legends Adiemi, Makoko and Smithrow, bring in a load of wonder kids, but there's no, there's no shining up this turd. We've got to play in the Club World Cup. Hello, welcome to Club 3, part 15 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode is our season review and transfer special at the end of a season in which we won the Bundesliga for the first time in 21 years. Our first major league title in the entire series. Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Let's do the season review first and then we'll get cracking on some transfers. And I promise I won't show you too much Club World Cup stuff. The early stages I'll play off camera. If we get deep into it, it might even end up being something we enjoy and maybe do an extra episode on if we get to the final. Who who knows? It seems unlikely. For context, if you are a new-ish viewer, I've never won the Club World Cup. It's horrible. I hate it. I don't like playing in it. It's awful. So... <laughs> Stay tuned for that, boys and girls. Signing of the season, Emil Hiskey. How can you argue with that? He's only just turned 20 years old. We spent just £10 million on him and he scored 24 goals and an average rating of 7.42. The boy is going to become the best striker in the world. One of many good signings as well this summer. Obviously, Conor Egan came in and was great. Ayadeli came in and was great. He's still only 22. We forget that. When we're getting so excited, or I forget it, when I'm getting so excited, about Hiskey and Van Eijma. I forget that Ayadeli only, he was 21 when we signed him. Um, but Van Eijma turned 18 this season and has been great as well. Lots of very good signings. If we can bring in more players of that kind of quality this summer, I'll be a happy little chap. Um, this was the way the season ended up. We were supposed to get into the Champions League. Obviously, we did because we won the league, as I say, for the first time in 21 years. And we won it in style as well, um, with Conor Egan finishing as our top scorer domestically. We did win a game 12-0 as well. That was a sign of things to come. Um, reputation and money-wise, not much has changed because we're already about as high as our reputation is likely to get. I guess if we were to win a Champions League and a Club World Cup, we might push that to five stars. But it takes a lot to push yourselves into becoming a real elite level club. Um, but sponsorships have gone up slightly. Everything else has gone down slightly because we didn't have that run to the Champions League final this year. Um, but it is only slight differences we made up for it in player sales to be fair um and merchandise wise we sell a lot of it carrier sells more shirts than anybody i love the idea of loads of germans walking around with big kev 46 on their back <laughs> that's just amazing um and of course smithrow and addy emmy probably going to be moving on this summer uh smithrow has been injured all season i'm fascinated that he sold all those shirts and didn't play a game this year because he did his cruciate ligaments twice um addy emmy wants to leave mccoke also wants to leave as well so we're going to see some new faces on the top shirt sellers next year I'm sure uh, Connor Egan didn't even make it into the team of the year um, a front four of Marrera Big Kev in fact Carrier didn't either that is very interesting Big Kev with his 7.42 average maybe I've treated him a little unfairly Van Eijma actually averaging less than a 7 I'm not too worried about he's playing in a position where it's notoriously difficult to actually get ratings in football manager playing as a defensive midfielder and and not taking the set pieces is pretty difficult. It shows just how well Ayadeli has played that in a similar role, he's managed to do a 7.12. And I think we probably do need upgrades at fullback and in goal. We'll get to that in a minute, but it shows on the team of the year. It shows on the squad planner. They're probably the areas we need to strengthen most of all. But fans player of the year and young player of the year and signing of the season all going to Hiskey. We've got a bit of a star there, haven't we? Averaging a 7.5 across the season. He didn't finish as top scorer though, Conor Egan got one more goal than him. He did get into the team earlier as well. Hiskey started the season injured, if you remember. Um, Marrera with most assists at 15. Most man of the matches goes to Hiskey. Top average rating to Big Kev on a lower average rating than Hiskey. 
Love football manager me. And uh, we also had Big Kev break the club record for goals in a match, scoring six in that 12-0 win we mentioned before. Marrera got more assists than anyone else has ever gotten in the history of Borussia Dortmund. And Kennedy Iadelli became our highest ever transfer in at just shy of £74 million. Pounds. So... Our plan, we're not going to worry too much about the all-time best 11 because most of it wasn't anything to do with me. But our plan, I've already looked at the squad planner and I think it's pretty clear that we need a goalkeeper. We already knew that. It's going to be hard to find, but we have got £144 million to spend. So we could just go bonkers and sign an absurd one for stupid money. Um, I think we probably need another left back, both Van Veen and Colombo. Not really elite level players. And likewise, at right back, we've got Ferrer, we've got Borches, but neither of them real elite level players. And I think that's probably where we need to be looking. We're pretty strong everywhere else obviously very strong up front the midfield I'm not going to worry too much about because we know Van Aijma and Ayadeli are both going to continue to get better and Maui and Dukic are fine as backups in there you can see there's lots of players who are loaned out who we probably need to sell so there's even more money going to be coming in just yet centre-back I think we're fine we've got three very good centre-backs and Nadzak is a wonder kid and Dukic has played played there quite a lot as a libero Ayadeli can do the same so I think we're fine there. We obviously don't need a striker. Even though we're going to be selling Adiemi and Makoko, we've got Hassan Begovic who can just slot in and be the fourth striker. Herrera played up front a few times was this season as well. So I think we can just sell them off and not bring any more in. And we're very strong in the wide areas. So the plan is fullbacks, goalkeeper, wonder kids, I think. I think that's the plan and I think it's a good plan. The other plan we potentially have, I think we probably need to look in terms of a new system. Not a new system for week in, week out in the Bundesliga, but something we can use in the Champions League. I'm thinking we go back old school, the good old fashioned 4-3-3 vertical tiki tacker that I used back in the streamer showdown era. Um, I've been using it a little bit on Twitch lately and it still works, boys and girls. Obviously, you have to go attacking. We're not cowards. Playing it, It's a coward system, but we're not going to play it like cowards. But something like this, where you could potentially put Big Kev into the midfield, bursting out of midfield, because Big Kev can play in centre mid and I think would be a very useful centre mid. Um, so we could play Big Kev in there with, like, I don't know, you play Ayadeli and then Van Aijma behind or vice versa. And then you can have just one of the exciting boys up front, Egan up front. Um, and then maybe you play Hiskey out left or out right. You can do either Carrier on the other side. And I think that probably works as a slightly more conservative system than the bonkers 4-4-2 at 4 2 4, it's good for blowing teams away, but does struggle against teams that are better than us. This might be a way to take on the teams that are better than us. Might have to think about that attacking mentality, but we're just going to have that training in the background and just make sure we do have players to fit that as well, which just means making sure we've got some midfielders. But I think we have. We've got plenty of players who can play centre mid. All our DMs can play there. The attacking midfielders can play there. Carrier can play centre mid. He's a natural central midfielder. I mean, imagine him bursting out of central midfield as a Mazala. Him and Big Kev as your central midfield partnership. It'd be lovely. Um, but that's the plan with all the money. Obviously, we need to sell the boys who want to leave as well, which is Makoko, Smithrow. Um, Addy Emmy says he's leaving on a free next summer when his contract expires. So we'll let him go. Um, and there's a couple of guys who want to leave, but I think we'll be able to convince them to stay. And uh, let's crack on with transfers. But first... The Club World Cup. The draw has already happened. This is our group. Atletico Nacional off of Colombia. Porto off of Portugal. And Tigres off of Mexico. So we should get through the group. Us and Porto, you would expect to be the two teams to get through that group. It's ridiculous how convoluted this system is now. Because you then get a second round, a quarterfinal, a semi-final and a final. It's a, like a month-long mini World Cup for clubs. So... I'm not going to show you any of the group stage games. If it starts to get spicy and it looks like we might have a chance of winning it, we might do an extra standalone episode and just kind of spread this summer out a little bit to show you the Club World Cup because we all love it, don't we? We all love the Club World Cup. But first, let's try and do some transfers before we have to go to wherever that's being hosted. Where is it being hosted? Uh, France. France. 
That's not very far. Well, folks, as you know, I've always been a massive fan of the Club World Cup, and it seems that nobody else is taking it as seriously as I always do. Love this competition. Um, but we got through the group stage very easily, thrashing everybody all the way through. Porto managed to sneak through as well, but it was very much sneaking through because we uh, we battered them as well, 3-0. Um, and then we moved into the second round where we faced Al Ali and absolutely thumped them, 7-0. Quarterfinal against Chelsea, and I assumed... Premier League opposition, end of the road for us. 5-0 win. We're suddenly good. Which brings us into the semi-final. Inter have already beaten Barcelona. If we can beat Arsenal, that sets us up for a repeat of last year's Champions League final and the chance for revenge on Inter. And obviously winning the Club World Cup is bigger than winning the Champions League, right? This one's for the entire world, not just for you. We'd be world champions. So we're going to play that match in just a second. Um, we have been doing a little bit of transfer stuff. Yusuf Makoko has gone to Galatasaray, £19 million. The other club in for him, Bristol City. His career really hasn't worked out the way it normally would. Um, there's some other potential transfers uh, going on as well. Um, we're signing Vic Schumacher, who's just finished top scorer in the under-21 Euros. I know I said we didn't need a striker, but he's £22 million. He's super quick. It doesn't hurt to have another one. He's just Makoko's replacement. It's fine. Um, and Franco Gonzalez is going to be leaving permanently to go to Nice. Um, he went there on loan and they've enacted his uh, £46 million transfer thing. Um, and same with uh, Bill Gehan Kalkan, who is a player I never used. He was just in our B team. We loaned him out to Ajax. They've cashed in for £23.5 million on their clause. Emil Smithrow leaves on a free in just a couple of days, which means it's only Adi Emi left to sell of the big three who've been here for years. All those transfers mean £161 million in the budget. It's weird because... I I want I, I think I've discovered something some of you probably already knew. Um, but these two transfers, I think we got the money for them in the budget back in January when they went on loan because we didn't sell £85 million of players in January, but we suddenly had that in the budget and I didn't really understand that at the time. Whereas now, the deals have gone through and our budget hasn't really increased. It's just increased by the amount makoko has gone for. So I don't know if the game just knew that they would be going permanently and gave us the money early or if every time you loan somebody out you get the money in the budget even if they don't join permanently but whatever it is we didn't get the extra money for those so obviously it helps the bank balance the bank balance is looking jolly nice um but we didn't get the extra money in the transfer budget that i was kind of expecting we would get so a little confused not megally confused a little confused. Let's go play Arsenal. And this is our team. It's Ribeiro in goal. A back for Van Veen, Garcia, Mormon and Borches. Dukic and Maui in midfield. Marrera and Herrera out wide. Big Kev and Emil Hiski up front. We've been rotating throughout this tournament because the games come every three days. It's like playing in the World Cup, except you actually get to rest your players from training, which is quite handy. So we've been doing lots of resting from training, lots of rotating. That's why that's not exactly what you would call a first choice team for us. I suspect looking at that Arsenal team, that might be their first choice team though. So we might be uh, we might be coming up against a little bit of a problem here. But then I thought that when we played Chelsea and we beat them 5-0. So who knows? Maybe we can go on and win this. Maybe we can go and get our revenge on Inter. Either way, getting through to the semi-final of this, having lost in the last 16 of the Champions League does make me feel a little bit better that we were just a little bit unlucky in the Champions League and maybe we're not as far behind some of these other some of these other leagues as I thought we were. The 5-0 win against Chelsea was definitely a big moment of, oh, hang on, maybe we're not awful, <laughs> which I thought we might be. Um, Arsenal have scored. I mean, it's typical, isn't it? The one that I decide to do off camera because it's only the quarterfinal, we get a big win. I show you this one, we're probably going to lose 5-0 and you're going to be like, yeah, Kev, you're still, you're still rubbish. You're still not up there. Premier League challenging. Um, I haven't actually looked where Arsenal finished last season. Um, let's go the really long route around finding our way to the Premier League. So Arsenal, um, they're first on alphabetical order. Um, Manchester City are the holders. If we jump back to last season, so Arsenal finished second, Chelsea finished seventh. So it is a different proposition today. We're playing against one of the best teams in the country as opposed to a team that 
isn't even going to be in the Champions League next year. So I guess take it with a pinch of salt. Um, maybe the maybe the run does end here. It's similar to our run to the Champions League final from a couple of years ago. This is the, effectively the first time we've come up against anybody any good and I might be getting a little bit too big for my boots and rotating players. And I don't know how Emil Hiskey has missed that. That was a huge chance for him and somehow he's missed it. He's been in great form throughout this tournament so far. But I am now wondering if I perhaps should have played my first choice team for this match. But ultimately, I don't really care if we win this. I'd like to win it. Don't get me wrong. I don't really care, care if we win it. Um, it would be nice to, you know, finally do it after all these years. But I'm not going to risk injuring my players by playing them in, what, seven, eight games, two a week for three or four weeks without any rest or any rotation. I'd rather have a fit squad going into the new season than a Club World Cup and three injured players. So I think I'm probably justified in doing what I'm doing. Plus, it does allow me to get an idea of who actually is good enough. And with all that money to spend, who maybe does need an upgrade? For example, if if Maui was way off the pace in a game like this, if he's not capable of coming in and playing in a semi-final, he shouldn't be in the squad. Um, so that's the thinking. Hiskey's scored, but I think the referee might be about to disallow it, which would be a little unfortunate because we've looked lively since conceding. It has been awarded. Lovely old stuff. 1-1. One, one. It's Emil Hiskey and Maui with the assist. I think Maui plays the ball for... No, it's actually Marrera with the assist, but Maui keeps his run. I like Maui. I like him. I think we're keeping him around. I think he's fine as a fourth choice midfielder. Um, right, 1-1 one, one at half time. A lot closer, like I say, than the game against Chelsea was, although we have been the better team again in this game. We're in very, very good form. It does, it does make me wish we'd have played in the Champions League the way we're playing in this. But I guess for our young, naive, inexperienced squad, it's only a positive thing to play in a tournament like this over the course of the summer and get experience of playing against the top teams, beating some of the top teams. It's got to help in that pursuit of hopefully going on and winning the Champions League next season, which, of course, is the plan. Ah, apologies for the jump cut. Um, doorbell rang, and I kind of just wanted to stop Saka scoring against us, so I figured if I just paused, it would stop time and he wouldn't score. Um, he didn't score, but someone else has. Excellent. Um, right, what's our, what's our plan here, then? I guess we go attacking. I really thought this might be my time. We've been playing so well in this tournament, but it turns out that once again, we just hadn't played anybody any good yet. As soon as we play against a good team, <laughs> we uh, we come unstuck. It's our, it's our little theme. Love it. Um, right, Big Kev turns and tries to get a counter-attack going, but ends up running straight into Odegaard. And uh, yeah, Arsenal are just coming at us very strongly early on in this second half we seemed we were looking quite good up until when we scored in the in the first half once once they scored and we started taking control of the game a little bit i thought we had a chance but we haven't looked good at all in this second half and them scoring their second doesn't seem to have slowed down their rampant attacking so we've got attacking in our own right but i think we probably need to be looking to make some substitutions sooner rather than later let's see if we can Let's see if we can get some game changers on. Um, so Herrera can come off for Carrier. Um, Dukic can come off for Van Aijma. Um, In fact, we will leave them that way around. And I think we'll also bring on Connor Egan for Big Kev. And hope that we can drag ourselves back into the game. Because I'd be very disappointed if the only match I show you from the Club World Cup is a defeat. I thought we'd at least get ourselves through to the final. I thought, thought the world was setting itself up, setting itself up for us to have a replay of our Champions League final. Give us an opportunity to get some revenge. Proper story. I wish this game was more scripted than it is. Goodness me. Right, Ayadeli's going to come on in midfield as well. We now will swap those two around into their normal formation um, and we'll get Addy Emmy on to play alongside Connor Egan. Oh, no, we're not going to click that. That's one of the forbidden buttons. Um, what we are going to do is go very attacking and hope that we've got an equaliser in us. I don't even know what happens if you draw. Does it go to extra time? Does it go to penalties? We've won every game so comfortably so far. And we've been the better team in this one. We're being FM'd in a big semi-final. And my run of never winning the Club World Cup continues, apparently. Terrific. Love that. Well, back to transfers, I suppose. 
Good luck in the final, Arsenal. Oh, football manager, you swine. Oh, we've got to play a third place playoff. Oh, I ain't doing that on camera. No interest in that. Well, we are back from France and the Club World Cup. We uh, we lost to Barcelona in the third place playoff and nobody ever cared. Um, but yeah, it turns out that when we play against anybody any good, we still lose, which does suggest we need an injection of quality into this football club. And we've certainly got the money to do it. This is what our squad is looking like at the start of July. So the lone players are back and there are quite a few of them. And there are certainly players that we need to shift out as we properly start to focus in and concentrate on this summer we really really need a goalkeeper that is top priority last time I checked Pilipovic was still the best goalkeeper in our league on the Dream 11 which is bonkers for our backup yeah there's there's just a real shortage of quality goalkeepers anywhere in Germany apparently maybe he should be our first choice but he's not good enough we need to get somebody better than him I'm tempted to just go and spend 100 million on a goalkeeper um, at left back Colombo and Van Veen are fine but I don't think they're Champions League winning quality so we'd love to bring somebody in over the top of them we obviously have got Adnan Nadzak who is was fifth on the next gen has lots of potential um, but potentially going to be a centre back I mean ideally he'd be a wide centre back in a three maybe maybe an inverted thing should we do an inverted thing we're not going to do an inverted thing we're not going to get that fancy and of course we've got Erdi Kayembi as well who we signed last summer who's uh, got lots of potential but probably not going to be ready just yet we've got people like this just knocking around he's 25 years old I don't really know why he's here but can we get him gone does anyone want him yeah let's get him gone Goodness me. And there's going to be a few more that we're going to go through and get gone in that way. Uh, again, on the other side, Ferreira, Borches are both fine, but not Champions League winning fine. So we probably need somebody there. At centre-back, Garcia is an elite centre-back, but doesn't have an elite partner. So maybe we need to go and bring in another elite centre-back, or maybe we make do with Mormon and Schakowsky while we wait for Nadzak. Not quite sure. Depends how the money goes. Um, in midfield, I'm very happy with Van Eijmaat and Ayadeli. I don't see that changing anytime soon. We've obviously still got Dujic, Dudic. One of the Nick Jonas brothers is back. In fact, they're both back. Uh, but Nick Jonas, Geimer, um, could potentially surpass Maui if we decide to sell Matt. I'm probably not going to sell Maui. I'm probably more likely to loan Nick Jonas Geimer out again. Um, like Vittici is going to be going out on loan again because he's just not close to ready and then on the left hand side um, we've obviously got Marrera who would be our starter out there but Hiski could play out there um, Adiemi we have had offers for £54 million pound offers from Lazio and two Saudi Arabian teams so he's almost certainly going to be leaving and um, we have got Conan who we signed last summer um, who was out on loan and still doesn't seem like he's ready so there's an argument maybe for another left winger to compete with Moreira, with Adiemi and Makoko and Smith Rowe all leaving, all who offered strength in that position. On the right, obviously, it's Carrier. Carrier could just as easily play on the left and let Herrera start over here. And both Hiski and Egan can play on that side as well, as can Vic Schumacher, the new striker that we brought in. And of course, Emir Hasenbegovic, who's been there a couple of years, but probably just, he's another one who isn't quite ready. Halleck Erzl probably need to get rid of. He's just not going to be good enough. Um, and we've got a couple of guys who that would that description would fit. Kai Norman North, who is a player who's come for our own youth system, um, is back from his loan. And there's an argument that we get him involved in the first team mix a little bit more. Um, but with just two stars of current ability, I feel like it's probably not his time yet. And then up front, we're fine. Egan, Hiskey, Big Kev, Schumacher has just come in and then Herrera and Hassan Begovic can play there as well. Sahel Fontaine is back and he's another one. It's just like, I mean, why are you here? Nobody even wants him. Why are you not on the transfer list? Get out of my football club. Get me an intermediary. Get him gone. Let's just get rid of all of the, the fluff that we don't need. And then go and strengthen in those areas that I think are probably the difference between winning the Champions League or not. That attack can win the Champions League. That midfield will get there. I don't know if it's there this year, but with the ages of Van Eijma and Ayadeli, I've got no interest in bringing in an old man there. So if it takes two years for them to become that kind of elite level, then so be it. Ayadeli's already considered elite and Van Eijma is already considered better than him. So I think we've got an elite midfield, an elite attack. We're let down by the defence and the goalkeeper. So... 
That's where we have to spend boring transfers because who wants to sign defenders? Goodness me. We've broken the transfer record again and we have reunited with Nikolai Suarez. £91 million. We said we needed another elite centre-back. We have an elite centre-back. England's starting centre-back. My former captain at Burton. We brought him in on loan when we were down in the Championship. We brought him in on loan again in the Premier League. We bought him as soon as we could. Really broke the bank for him at Burton, but made him captain immediately. He was great. He's still only 24 years old. He is an elite level centre-back. He's a left-sided centre-back, which is quite handy as well. And he joins us for a club record £91 million to be our new uh, our new centre-back partner to David Garcia, who is also left-sided, if I recall. Yeah, this. I mean, that's going to be a problem. Two left-sided centre-backs. It's fine. We'll worry about that. Garcia can play left-back. It'll be fine. Um, we've also sold Curry Madiemi. He's gone to Al Nasser for £54 million and he's earning crazy money. Good luck to him. I mean, we couldn't offer him anywhere near that. Go and have a fun time. Um, we've also loaned out a few more of the fringe players. We actually decided to sell Vit Tichy at 20 years old. He is still classed as a wonder kid, but with Suarez coming in, he was just never going to get in the team and we've made a slight profit on him and I'm always happy with a slight profit. Suarez obviously takes a big chunk of transfer money, but because we're selling so many players as well, we still have loads left. We are really, really struggling to find a goalkeeper. Um... We were going to bring Kim Christian Hoyenhal in. That's a blast from the past, um, but he's going to cost us over £100 million. I just can't justify He's that not that much better than Ribeiro for £100 million. And if we're going to spend that kind of money, Antonio Carlos at Manchester United would cost us about £150 million and is probably the best goalkeeper in the world. We could, have, we could just go and blow £150 million on a goalkeeper. And it would probably be the missing piece of the puzzle, but it just seems so expensive. Bearing in mind, the board want me to uh, sign players to sell for a profit. There's no way we sell him for a profit. But then on the flip side, they also want me to spend the original transfer budget. So that would get that job done. Um, there's this guy, Christian Chang, who's at Leipzig. But Pilipovic is the best goalkeeper in the Bundesliga, apparently. And again, he's another guy who's going to cost us 100 million plus if we're spending that amount of money you get Antonio Carlos. And that's kind of what I come back to with a lot of these. If you're going to spend that kind of money, get the best guy, you might as well. I mean, there's no guarantee he even comes to us, but there is no goalkeeper in world football on his level. I mean, shall we see? Will they just take that? Is this bonkers if I sign him? Will he even discuss terms with us? We tried for Dennis Simon again. I mean, we do need a goalkeeper. I don't know that I've ever spent this kind of money on a goalkeeper before. We're not having a sell on percentage. Goodness me, what do you think this is? We might be signing £144 million worth of goalkeeper. Is that insane? I can't decide if that's bonkers or not. Because we need him and he's literally the only one out there. And apparently he's available. I don't know why he's leaving Manchester United. Where did they finish in the league last year? Did they not get in the Champions League? Uh, domestic leagues. They finished fourth, so they're in the Champions League. I don't really get why he'd leave and come to us. Other than money, I guess. United are only considered a four and a half star team. So how much is he earning there? It's not even a pay rise. He just fancies a change of scenery, maybe. I don't understand. But we might be signing him. Oh, we, we probably do just have to sign him, don't we? Oh, we did it then. We've signed the best goalkeeper in the world. Um, Antonio Carlos, Brazil international, four and a half star current ability player. Um, he's probably not just the best goalkeeper in the world, not just the best goalkeeper in Bundesliga. He's probably our best player now. Obviously, he goes straight into that Dream eleven, And uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if he was considered... He's not, he's still not carrier level, but that is uh, possibly the most bonkers signing I've ever made. But also, arguably, for the state of this game universe, the most important signing we could possibly make because there is no, no one, we can't, there is no team we can come up against now who are going to have a better goalkeeper than we do. 
that is a huge competitive edge when it comes to playing in the Champions League. So he's only 23 as well. We could sell him to Real Madrid in three years for even more money. That's the really mad thing. I, I still don't get why he left Manchester United. And intermediaries offered us Jude Bellingham, by the way. Um, but he's going to cost us 100 million as a 30-year-old, and I'm a little reluctant to do it. We haven't really got the money left to do it either now. Although we do now need to sell a goalkeeper. And as you can see, there's players leaving the club all the time. Ozil going to Spurs for 30 million. Um, I don't need to do a press conference to unveil him. But um, yeah, this is there's still 66 million to spend. I mean, it's not as if on a net spend basis, I've gone bananas this summer either. We've got two real elite level world class Premier League players. Plus the best young striker around who we didn't already have. And we've sold a lot of fringe players and old guys who didn't want to be here anymore. More business? Which one of these do we sell? I think he's already happy to be back up, isn't he? So it makes sense to sell Ribeiro. So let's sell Ribeiro. No one wants him. Let's pop him on the transfer list. Iron intermediary. Still nobody wants him. Let's try and generate some interest in Ribeiro. In the meantime, we're potentially bringing this guy in from Barcelona. It seems to be taking forever to do, um, but he's just a decent utility option. Only 21, um, probably will end up being my left back, um, but he can also play centre-back, defensive midfield, centre midfield if we decide to go with that. For £40 million with Barcelona pedigree. Last time I plucked someone out of Barcelona like that, it was Cabasi and he was brilliant at Burton. So... Uh, that seems sensible. And then we just need a right back. Um, looking at Burton, by the way, obviously we've just whipped their captain away from them. They've also sold Quintana to Bristol City. Um, they finished mid-table last year and I think they're just selling off the crown jewels now, ready to settle into being a mid-table team. Should we get Cabasi? We're not going to get Cabasi as well. Is there anyone else we'd like to pull out of this team? I'm still interested in Homo. Hmm... We'll leave them alone for now. We've given them enough spensies for this summer. Now hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. With Adiemi and Makoko leaving, we needed homegrown at club players. He's only 30 years old. Yes, we're having to pay him nearly half a million pounds a week. But he's Jude Bellingham. A, he is Jude Bellingham. And B, we have just sold Adiemi Makoko and Smith Rowe, who actually, between the three of them, earned more money per week than Bellingham. And for Adiemi and Makoko combined, we got £75 million in. So we've effectively paid £25 million plus Adiemi Makoko and Smith Rowe to get Bellingham whilst reducing our wage budget and bringing a homegrown at club player back into the club who is a legend. He is one of the best players in world football and he's still only 30 years old. This seems like a no-brainer. The one downside, of course, we are going to have to change the system because there's no way I'm playing Jude Bellingham as a holding midfielder in the system we've been using. So I'm thinking that 4-3-3 I speculated experimenting with earlier in the summer now becomes a reality. And I think we go to a 4-3-3 with Bellingham just having everything he wants. We have had to give him a match highest earner clause, but let's face it, no one's going to be earning more than that. So I don't consider that too much of a big deal. Um, we've also got offers for Ribeiro, so he should be on his way out of the club. And fingers crossed we're also signing that left back from Barcelona still. Nadzak is also on his way out. It's This has been the craziest summer I've ever done. But Jude Bellingham is back at Borussia Dortmund. How about that as a potential 11 to make it work, boys and girls? Antonio Carlos, best goalkeeper in the world. I know we still need to upgrade the fullbacks, Van Veen and Ferreira. That might have to wait. I think we've done enough to maybe get away with not having to. Um, Suarez and Garcia at the back. Van Eijmer at the base of the midfield with Bellingham and Carrier ahead of him. 
Emil Hiskey on the left, Herrera on the right, and Egan up front. You have the option of playing Morera and moving Hiskey up front. You've got Big Kev who can play anywhere in that little triangle. Ayadeli can come in anywhere in there and is an elite level player. You've got Schakowsky who can come in at the back and is a really good defender. That team wins the Champions League, right? It's it's a foregone conclusion at this point. Surely. Well, as you can imagine, after all that spending, we didn't bring anybody else in other than Fontana, Fontanils, who I'd already told you about. I don't think he'd signed when Bellingham had signed, um, but he is now in the squad as well. And the job then was just getting bodies out to uh, cover the fact that we were half a million pounds over our wage budget. So we needed to reduce the wage spend and also get some transfer money into them through into wages so uh, i think you saw urzel leave but nadzak has gone on loan to monaco and um, we decided to sell Audi kmb i don't think he was ever going to be good enough to actually play for us so he's gone to ajax on a slight profit and um, we sold a few more fringe players ribeiro went to west ham he's gone on loan for the season with an optional future fee and once again the optional future fee went straight into my transfer budget so I assume that means at the end of the season, he will make that move permanent. And that's what football managers doing. If he comes back, we may have an infinite money glitch, which would be interesting. It's not something I'm actively looking to abuse, but it kind of happens by accident sometimes. Um, so that has got us back on the straight and narrow when it comes to money. We're absolutely fine for FFP and our projection long term is looking fine as well. We're slightly overdrawn, but we're not going to worry about it. And uh, this is the team that we're going to put out there against Bayern in the next episode in the Super Cup. A little bit experimental. We're trying a few new things. This isn't necessarily going to be our week in, week out team. I'm a little bit concerned about Van Aijma being all on his own. So we're going to try Ayadeli as a Barrow coming up alongside him, Borches as an inverted fullback and tucking in with Schakowsky to basically be a back two with Van Veen on a more defensive instruction, helping them out as well. It could be a complete mess or it could be genius. Frankly, this end of the pitch is just all about trying to keep people away from Antonio Carlos, but letting him do his thing when the time comes. Um, obviously, Suarez will become a part of that defence in the very near future as well. Um, but the, where it becomes really exciting, Van Aijma was a hero last year and now he's got Bellingham and Carrier as his outlets slightly ahead of them and then a front three for that match of Moreira, uh, Moreira Big Kev and Emil Hiskey but I mean look at the bench we've got Conor Egan um, we've got Suarez who we've just brought in Mormon suspended so not able to play Garcia's not fully fit Herrera is not fully fit we have got some real top quality in this team and I am very very excited to see this team in action and to just experiment with my new box of toys, which is these new players over the course of the season. I don't know if that's going to be the best way to get the best out of those two, but if they click, oh my word, can you imagine if those two click as a midfield too with Van Aijma behind them? We're going to be unstoppable. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.